On behalf of the Work Better Now team, I would like to welcome everybody to Working Better Now, a series on workbetternow.com featuring a Q&A with a successful business leader. And today we are thrilled to be joined by Richard Shapiro, who is the founder and president of the Center for Client Retention. Richard, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, Rob, thank you for inviting me to uh, your series and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for, for a long time. We met, I guess, sometime in the past year and I was, uh, A, I was surprised that we hadn't met in the past and B, I was really fascinated by your business and your expertise. So tell us a little bit about your business. Tell, tell us about the, the Center for Client Retention. Sure. Uh, well, I founded the Center for Client Retention, actually, it's a little over 30 years ago. It does seem like yesterday. You know, we started in the attic and then moved to the kind of the rec room and then eventually to office space and uh, then to luxurious office space. And uh, during COVID, we actually went virtual. So we, we made a complete 360 uh, turnaround. Uh, but my company, uh, the Center for Client Retention, our primary service is designing and conducting uh, customer satisfaction measurement systems, but measurement systems that actually work, that provide information that give our clients control. Uh, and basically the ultimate goal of any survey process should be to maximize the revenues of your business. So that, that's what we do. And that's where I spend most of my time. Gotcha, terrific. Um, so give, connect the dots between these surveys and client retention. Sure. Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, uh, you know, surveys should be about information. Uh, and I think where a lot of companies uh, falter or miss an opportunity on doing surveys uh, is looking at it from this perspective that the survey questions, let's just say you had a survey and it was 10 to 15 questions. All 15 questions should not be about customer satisfaction. Uh, you know, maybe five should be about customer satisfaction and the rest of the 10 should be strategic questions, challenges, uh, things that are going to happen in the future. Uh, you know, a, a question like, you know, let's say we had went through the COVID, you know, how is COVID affecting your business or what changes are you expecting? And some of those could be closed ended. Some of those could be open ended questions, but that's, that's where most companies go wrong. They really treat the satisfaction process as purely satisfaction and not as an opportunity to gain strategic information. And that strategic information also can be uh, given back to the clients or you know, if you interview 100 of your customers and you gather all this information, it's another opportunity to feed that information back, you know, help, you know holding a webinar or uh, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, at a user's conference, uh, you know, you could present the findings. And of course, you're presenting whatever you want to present, uh, but it's a good opportunity to engage uh, and to also show the value of, of why uh, you're taking the, your customer's time and even asking these questions in the first place. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, when you get these responses back, I mean, you're going to find some of the questions that you said are going to be about how you're doing. But you, you said you're going to also have some maybe some forward-looking questions. What does a company do with that data in addition to sharing it back, you know, a compiled version of it back? How do they use that to actually improve client retention? Yeah. Well, most of our clients, uh, you know, they set up a process where, uh, you know, maybe not separate meetings, but if they're having monthly staff meetings or weekly staff meetings, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, they'll segment the surveys or the segment, the results, you know, and, and, and assign different teams to different sections. So uh, let's just say it was a business to business type survey where you're evaluating logistics and, and the, you know, the warranty program, whatever, you know, whatever the different components of the, of the operation would be, you might assign different, you know, teams to work on different tasks. And, you know, the verbatim comments really are the most important and valuable aspect of any company or any, any survey product. Uh, you can't ask why uh, on every survey question, but certainly uh, it's important to know. I mean, let's just relate it to the net promoter score, which a lot of people do. You know, unless you know why somebody actually wants to recommend you or not recommend you, you can't do anything with that information. So the most important thing is to ask, you know, a combination of questions uh, that are quantitative and qualitative, and then get enough information from the qualitative uh, research to make changes. You know. 
And and do you do you see that companies benefit companies who do these surveys and do them right? Do you see that they benefit more from tweaking their delivery or their product, or is it more about developing new revenue opportunities? Well, I would say it was a third. It's about communication. <laughs> you know, you know, I did a one of my second jobs. Uh, I did for a, a big manufacturer of, of elevators, uh, and uh, you know, they had lost actually. Uh, 30 clients over like a two year period. And, you know, the sales force wrote up a lost account report and uh, 29 out of 30, they claimed it was because of price and they didn't believe it was price. So I went out to actually visit. That was the assignment. It took me like two months to visit these 30 organizations, which were hotels, department stores, uh, libraries, universities. And at the end, only one was price. 29 were actually all about communication. So uh, the biggest reason why companies lose clients is because the communication is not there. And that includes, you know, follow up, you know, not getting back to people, not, not visiting them often enough, not seeing them. Uh, another big thing that I always, uh, you know, point out to any company is anytime you have a new contact at a, at a company, basically you have to start over. You have to start the whole onboarding situation. So Whenever you have a new contact within your client's organization, you have a new, new company and you have to start the process of really, you know, welcoming them, teaching them about your business and building that relationship. And a lot of companies don't do that. And that's where they, that's how they lose clients. It might not be that second, but maybe a year or two years when the contract ends, that's the end. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so easy to take that for granted. So that's a great point. Uh, take for granted that they'll be up to speed. Um, Richard, how, how did you get into this? It's a it's a really you know it's an interesting niche. How did you get into uh, into the client retention space? You no, know, that's that's an excellent question. Uh, when I was about twenty one or twenty two, uh, after graduating college, I was going for my MBA at Fairleigh Dickinson University uh, in New Jersey, and uh, even though I grew up in retail and learned a lot of things from my dad about customer experience, uh, I did decide to take the corporate route. And uh, I started with a, a startup called ADP, uh, which is today the largest payroll processing company in the world. And when I started with ADP, the revenues were only 40 million. And when I left, there were 4 billion. Um, and today they're about $15 billion. And ADP, uh, I was vice president, ultimately vice president of client retention and customer satisfaction. And ADP uh, always focused on customer retention. Matter of fact, uh, they did walk the talk. Uh, as far as bonus plans and compensation plans that every supervisor and above, a big part of their compensation was based on the client retention rate. And not only the client retention rate overall, but also the client retention rate uh, for first year business, because typically in a lot of uh, companies, uh, first year attrition is much higher than overall retrition because people, if they get frustrated early, uh, they're gonna uh, you know, drop that, that uh, vendor. So um, I was responsible for client retention and they had a, ADP did have a survey, a very in-depth survey process, uh, but it was a mail survey and uh, it had room for comments, but not too many comments. So what happened is when we, when every general manager and those 40 general managers, I was general manager of the largest region, when we got back our results, we had the line items for each survey uh, quantitatively, but if someone said, oh, why did this uh, uh, region really get great customer service scores this, this time? And why did they go down, you know, two months later? Nobody knew. So I knew that as successful as ADP was, their survey process could be a lot more effective. Uh, and, um, and I didn't make the change at ADP, but I started this new company called the Center for Client Retention. And for the first 25 of our 30 years, we did qualitative telephone interviews with our clients' customers. And they could be someone who bought a $5 candy bar or it could be uh, uh, you know, that we're interviewing Walmart. It was the same people. Uh, matter of fact, I was probably a little ahead of the game, not realizing it, that all of our interviewers, and we had about 40 interviewers at that time, uh, they all had either college degrees or advanced degrees, and they worked from their home offices. They were mostly, you know, women who, who at that time elected to stay home. So 
I realized that the survey, once again, tied into my original message, should be about collecting information. And most of the surveys prior to starting my company really were just about CSAT and not about getting this, you know, great strategic information that can help you, you know, retain clients. Gotcha, gotcha. Thanks for that. Um, most of our audience, almost all of our audience, uh, small and mid-sized businesses. What, how can they be using surveys um, effect, more effectively to both retain and, and also grow their customer base? It, it, there's two different forks to it. Uh, depending on how small a business is, uh, I don't always recommend that they do a survey. Um, you know, if, if someone had 25 to 50 customers, I would rather that they went out and visited um, their uh, clients or, or set up, you know, Zoom calls and went through a series of questions that actually you know, I have some samples of to collect their own customer feedback. I, I would, that would be a thousand times more valuable than sending out a survey. So even though we're in the survey business and we make 99% of our <laughs> revenues and profits from doing survey, if it's a small company, I would rather have the CEO or the sales force or the account managers trained on how to collect this feedback themselves. Uh, because not only do you get great information, it helps to build a really good relationship. And that's what I did in my last role at ADP. I, I taught the account managers how to build relationships through by asking a series of questions, strategic questions to the accounts. And, uh, you know, not only was the client retention increased, we also maximized, you know, the revenue from existing customers. So it depends how many customers you have. If it's B2C and you have a lot of customers, I think a survey is a great tool. If it's B2B and you have a limited number of customers, I'd go out and do the, I wouldn't call it a survey, but a client analysis process yourself. Gotcha, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna ask you, a, it's a two part question because I wanna give you the flexibility to ask where you think you can uh, answer with where you think you can add the most value. Are there any particular questions that you can say regardless of the company um, should be asked? Um, and or um, are there is there when it comes to let's say finding new revenue streams are there any good questions or any any good tactics to use to um, not only improve the, the, the uh, client retention but also to develop new to look for opportunities to develop new revenue streams? Yes, uh, I can try to answer all those questions. I think. Uh, one, one question really is centered around hope. And actually hope has to, ha, happens to be the strongest human emotion. Uh, you know, I could go into a room and say, you know, what's the strongest human emotion? And people will say love, hate. Uh, and, but those fear, but those are not the strongest. Strongest are, are hope. So I like to employ a question that would say, you know, what are you really hoping to get out of this relationship? And hope is the strongest level. And hope might not be that, uh, you know, they could be, um, you know, let's say you're a, a contractor, you know, you're doing renovations. Um, you know, if you went into a, you know, prospective homeowner who, who might be purchasing your services, if you ask them what you're hoping for, they might not just say that they're looking for a contractor to build a room. They might say, you know what? I, I just got a promotion and, and my company does a lot of entertaining and I want this most magnificent room where I can entertain and show off, you know, my family and things like that. You know, hope is the highest level. So hope is, is, is really a good word to incorporate into any, any, any question. If you were asking one question, that's important. Uh, when you asked about how to maximize revenues, it might not necessarily be the first question, but a lot of uh, times we'll include in a survey, you know, uh, many of our clients, we found that many of our clients weren't aware of a lot of the services that we have to offer. And you might list like five or six and say, were you aware of these services or not? You know, and, and possibly have it go to another skip pattern of, you know, would you like to, I mean, you can't make this, you shouldn't turn the survey into a sales tool, but yes, you, you can find out certain information, uh, you know, that would be really helpful. And 
And uh, you know, as far as survey questions, this wasn't exactly what the question was that you asked, but I like to also ask uh, two different types of questions uh, rather than just, let's say, using a scale of one to five. And one of them is, especially if you're in the service business, like over time, like over the last year, has our service support improved, you know, stayed the same or deteriorated? Because maybe someone's gonna give you an eight, but it used to be a nine or a 10. So that maybe they're not gonna be so happy now, even though you might think eight is a great score. And another thing is how you rate against your competition. It doesn't even have to be direct competition. It could be other suppliers, you know, about demonstrating appreciation or follow-up or, or being in touch. So. And if it's you know better, or comparable, or not as good, uh, if that's, let's say those you know certainly if if you got uh, the the customer to say or even a prospect, which is another point of the surveys, uh, to say, well actually you know ABC company does a better job or you do a better job, you could find out why, and that could either be you know leveraging your your strengths or, or trying to firm up your weaknesses. And a lot of these questions, which I just alluded to in, one, in, this, in a second, is sometimes you can use these survey questions for a prospect. When you go on a prospect call, you could say, you know, just like I said, what are you hoping for? Or, you know, I know you've been using ABC vendor, you know, over the last year, you know, has their service improved or not? You, you can turn around a lot of these questions uh, for prospecting as well as for your customers. I'm smiling because these tips are amazingly valuable and I'm sure we're going to be incorporating them at work better now. And I'm sure a lot of our clients are as well. Um, th this has been really fantastic. Uh, switching gears a little bit. When you're not working, Richard, what do you like to do? Uh, well, what I like to do is uh, I like to go uh, antiquing and, and like, I just happen to have this box here, but it is here. So, uh, I have a very large antique memorabilia collection and it has to be client related. So this tied is Procter and Gamble and that is, you know, one of our clients that does work with us periodically. So I have a very large collection. I have the first McDonald's sign from the first McDonald's franchise in McLean, Illinois. Uh, I have Frito-Lay bags from the 1930s. I have a lot of cool items. Unfortunately, most of them are in storage right now because we moved from, from New York to Florida, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I think this would get your attention because it says tied five cents off. So, uh, but I, I'm sure if you actually had this in the supermarket, someone would pick it up and wonder why it's only five cents off or who's coming up with this crazy idea. But right. yeah, my wife and I like to do a lot of that antiquing. I mean, now pretty much a lot of it's online, but in the old days, uh, it was all going to, you know, antique fairs. It was a fun thing to do. Right. right and right. beside that, I have uh, four grandchildren and, uh, you know, you adult children, so that keeps us uh, busy as well. That's fun. Fantastic. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, checking out your museum when you open it up with, with all of these things. I will, I will, I will. Okay. Uh, Richard, where can people find out more about you and your company? Sure, I, I would say the best place right now is LinkedIn. I have a very robust uh, LinkedIn profile and I actually am starting a whole uh, you know, video series and podcast series myself where I'm posting a lot of those clips on LinkedIn. So it's Richard R. Shapiro, pretty much if you put Richard R. Shapiro, it's going to come up. And then our, our company website, which is the initials of our company, the Center for Client Retention, it's tcfcr.com. So uh, those are the two places uh, that I think would be most relevant and would give you the greatest, you know, tools and tips. Fantastic. Richard, I want to thank you so much for taking a few minutes uh, out of your day to day to be speaking with the Work Better Now community and for sharing these awesome insights. Uh, thank you, Rob, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. And I, and I've heard a lot of wonderful things about your you know your service. So uh, I'm going to find out about it for sure. One of my next tasks. Terrific. Thanks again, Richard, and uh, have a terrific day. You too.